What's going on guys? So today I just wanted to make a video strictly on largemouth bass fishing. A lot of you guys that watch YouTube videos, or I feel like, you know, the majority of the community pretty much just bass fishes. Everybody loves, everybody grows up doing this. Everybody tries to get into it at some point, I can almost guarantee. And that's just pond hopping and, you know, catching bass for fun. I grew up bass fishing. It's something I love to do. Even though you guys see me post a ton of musky videos and stuff like that, this is something I grew up doing. I actually tournament bass fish. You know, you guys will be seeing videos and stuff like that. But today I want to show you guys a couple setups, whether it be you have a few setups or you only have one, this is still going to benefit you. Um, you can take to the pond and do work on, and on top of that, four different baits that I like to take to ponds year round to catch fish on that are going to help you out and, you know, they're going to help you catch fish. So we're going to head over to the pond. I'm going to switch over to the GoPro and uh, I'm going to give you guys some tips, tricks on how you guys can do some bass fishing year round, whether it be, you know, whatever time of year it is. So I'll see you guys at the pond. We'll see you in a minute. Say you guys have never been to this lake before, all right? Or, or pond, I should say. Um, you don't know what to do. You're like, okay, I found this place on Google Maps or I heard about it, this and that. Okay, there's so much water to work, but I only have such a little time. So like, how am I gonna figure out, you know, what's gonna get it done? What's the best way I could do that? Yada, yada, yada. So the first thing that I like to go to, which is a good go-to for anyone, if you've never fished the pond, you're dealing with, you know, a big open area, is a spinner bait. Some type of blade bait like this is going to allow you to work this pond at a, you know, a faster rate and kind of cover a lot more area versus, you know, fishing a jig where you're gonna flip it from spot to spot to spot, etc. So it's kind of allowing you to search for those fish, trying to figure out, you know, where they're at. If you have open areas, it's going to allow you to just cover way more ground than any other bait in your tackle box. The reason, you know, I like to go to a spinner bait for like working ponds and stuff like that is it's not too often that you find a bad time to fish spinner baits. Like spinner baits will kill it in the spring, you know, you'll kill them in dead summer and you'll kill them in the fall. So it's a good all around go-to bait, you know, when it comes to bass fishing or any kind of fishing for that matter. If you guys pan fish, a lot of people use rooster tails, trout, everything. There's really not a fish out there, even musky with big bucktails, there's really not a fish out there that won't annihilate a spinner bait. You know, so this is a beneficial bait to when you're just trying to cover ground or you're trying to figure out a new pond and you're trying to just, like right there, there's a fish. Get into some fish. That's a good fish. Feels like a good one. Stay on, stay down, buddy. Oh yeah, he's a nice one. There we go. Oh yeah. And there's the first fish of the day. So right there, that allowed me, that's a good fish, a little pound and a half. Throw that rod down. He's, he's a healthy little fish. All right, anyway, so basically what I'm doing is, so I'm working in and out of these lily pads. You know, I'm not gonna throw something to get down in there. I'm just trying to search for fish and there's just patches in and out of these lily pads. Obviously you can't bring a spinner bait through these lily pads. It's not gonna benefit you. You're gonna get caught up in it with a spinner bait. But if you can aim your casts in and out of these gaps 90% of the time, well, at least, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe that's kind of a high, uh, you know, ratio, but you know, most of the time those fish are gonna jet out from under those lily pads and they're just gonna annihilate that spinner bait. So I'm gonna take a couple casts with this and show you guys a different tip uh, after, you know, I just, I just like fishing this right now. So after I throw this bait a little bit. Okay, so say, you know, I caught a fish on a spinner bait. Cool, that works. So that goes to show you guys, it's not that hard to find fish quick. I mean, depending on the pond, this bait right here is going to allow you to cover more water, find fish, trigger a bite, pretty much any time of the year. It's a good go-to, you really can't go wrong. All right, and then I'm throwing that on a, you know, a rod with a decent amount of backbone that's gonna allow me to wing that, you know, they're a little bit heavier than most uh, lures out there on a, you know, a more sensitive, which is fluorocarbon line. Not too heavy, not overpowering, but that's a 15 pound line on a moderate, to, to me, what I think is moderate uh, of a reel. That's pretty much my go-to. So moving on from the spinner bait, going on to another go-to that kinda serves the same purpose as the spinner bait, but it's a little more exciting, a little more fun. And, uh, but it's also gonna allow you to search that pond. It's gonna allow you to cover more ground. 
and uh, do things like that. But this is a bait that I mainly am only gonna fish either late in the evening or early in the morning. And again, I've used this bait in spring, summer, fall. It works just as good <laughs> any time of the year. And that is a buzz bait. So uh, basically this, it's a spinner bait that rides on top of the water. So it's a form of top water. And if you guys have ever fished them, they're so fun. There's nothing more fun than ripping one of these across the water and then just watching it get annihilated. You know, the bugs are breaking, the fish are breaking, and you wanna just cover cover ground. You're gonna take this guy and you're just gonna run it down every shoreline and see you know, what's gonna be willing to take it. If you want, you can run it in and out of these lily pads. And uh, I'm fishing this on a similar setup. I'm fishing this on a medium heavy, uh, 15 pound fluorocarbon, and I actually have a little bit of a higher gear ratio reel with this. I actually have a Quantum PT uh, seven to one gear ratio burner on this thing. And the reason I prefer to have a higher gear ratio is um, I just like to get a fast snap on these buzz baits. I like to get them right on top of the water. I don't want to feel like I have to just run my hand through the reel. I just can, you know, keep on the reel nice and steady and it's going to keep that bait on top of the water. There's one, there we go. I knew it was gonna be in this cove. Come on, buddy. There we go. Whoo! Got ourselves a nice buzz bait fish. So, get rid of him. So like I said, it's gonna work good as a search bait. Right now it's, you know, making that transition into the fall. Uh, top water's, you know, it's not a bad move. But a lot of guys will normally fish like things like kind of like walking baits this time of year, like spooks uh, and stuff like that. Oh, there's another one. There we go. Oh, he spit it. Oh, he spit it. Tighten up my drag a little bit. Try if you want to go with that, but this is like I said, the main purpose to, is these are just baits to try and help you cover a pond faster, try and figure one out a little better. So they really wanted this. But, ah, oh, darn, man, I saw him wake on that. He just, I knew he wasn't gonna stay on there, though. Instead of the topwater buzz bait. So, so far, we threw a spinner bait and a topwater buzz bait. And like I said, we're dealing with search baits here. Basically, what we're doing is we're, we're trying to cover as much water as we can to try and figure out a pond and try and find more fish. So, the next bait that I'm going with right here, I got a little bit of string on here, is a swim bait. This bait right here. I'm fishing a pond, whether you're fishing a pond, a river, a lake. Um, this time of year in the fall, the, the main thing that just pretty much all fish in general, but definitely bass, are going for are shad. They're looking for that school of shad that's going to be swimming towards the river and the lakes, even the pond. If you guys got shad in the, in the pond, they're just going to be migrating to wherever those shad are at because right now they're trying to just fatten up for the winter. So swim baits are definitely a good go-to. Another thing, uh, this pond that I'm fishing right here has aerators. So if you guys have a, you know, a pond in your development or you're fishing somewhere in a lake that has, you know, systems, aerator systems is what I'm trying to say. Those shad like to group up under those aerators. They like to get up in there. They like to get under those fountains. So. Yeah, this, this swim bait's gonna work all throughout the pond. It's gonna help you cover more water because you're just, it's a, you're casting, you're retrieving, you're casting, you're retrieving. But if you have places like where I'm going right now where you can reach an aerator, I can guarantee you if you throw that bait into that aerator, it's going to do you well. There's one. Oh, it's a little guy. He whacked it out of nowhere though. Look at this guy. Oh, what a tank. But there you go. Look at the color of this one. It's a beautiful fish. That's a beautiful pond largemouth right there. So a little guy on the swim bait, literally right out of the aerator, off the shore over here. Because there's, there's actually, you know, there's, there's an aerator here on the pond, there's an aerator here, an aerator back there, and then two more on the other side of the pond. So I'm just trying to focus, you know, around these aerators and even the shoreline. I'm not saying just the aerator, but that's where I like to throw swim baits. Um, you know, it's not working out that great. I'm not catching them that much, you know, so I'm gonna start throwing the swim bait through these lily pads down that shoreline and just see if we can trigger a bite. Really get into some fish. It sucks because I, 
you know, I'm being kind of quick, I'm kind of being fast paced, but I unfortunately only have like, I only get like an hour of daylight. There's another fish. Just, there we go. Like I said, just right in and out of those lily pads. And boom. Like, and he, he toasted that. It's, he toasted, that's it. <laughs> All right, but yeah, he crushed it. Throw him back. Literally just these gaps I'm looking for. So I see a nice little gap right there in between those lily pads. I'm literally just gonna try and feed that in there and just slowly retrieve that thing. And they like to just come out of there and nail it. There's one. Boom. What's going on, dude? I felt you in there. Man, they're still crushing it. Another little guy. So in a minute here, I'm gonna test this tactic. So like I said, I've been throwing a swim bait. I, threw a sw I, don't, I only threw the sw spinner bait for like two minutes. I really didn't throw it long, and I'm sure I probably would have produced more if I walked around the lake with that, but I'm literally just feeding this in and out of the lily pads. Just very slowly retrieving it, and they're just, they're loving it. Alrighty, so we're gonna put the swim bait down and we're gonna pick up my frog rod. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna throw the frog. I'll explain to you why it's my frogging rod, but actually what I'm going to do is, because I don't know, the top water just wasn't that hot and I kinda wanna test the odds. So let's test the odds that you don't wanna search anymore. You used a spinner bait, used a top water, swim bait, you know, you, you threw your main cover baits, baits you're gonna throw around here. Or you're just at a pond, you know, that isn't like this. It doesn't look anything like this. Uh, it's got a lot of underwater cover. It's got logs, it's got rocks. It's got things where, you know, maybe you searching around isn't working as well. I mean, I guarantee you those baits will pull fish out of any type of cover, unless it's just all weeds. But say, but basically what I'm throwing here is, this is a VMC weighted Texas rig hook or a weighted worm hook. And um, these things are awesome. You know, it's, they punch really good. These crawdads are by Havoc, I believe, Berkeley Havoc. Uh, they have like a nice little swim action to them. They're sweet. The reason that I'm throwing them on this setup is one, I guess, to give you a you know, lowdown real quick. This is a heavy action rod. This is like what I like to call my beef stick. It's a Shimano Crucial jigging rod. Uh, I also use this as my frog rod. It's a 7.3 rod, a little bit longer, and um, I'm throwing a high gear ratio reel, which is uh, 7.11, and I'm throwing 65 pound braid. The reason that I have such a high gear ratio a long rod and heavy line is because when you're fishing cover like this, having a high gear ratio reel is gonna allow you to pick up that slack when you go to set that hook. Along with when you're fishing heavy cover like this, a heavy rod and heavy line is gonna help you, you know, pull through on that hook set. It's gonna help you rip through all these lily pads. It's gonna help you get through all that vegetation. It's gonna help you really pull through everything. And on top of that, the braided line is gonna give you little to no stretch when it comes to setting that hook and, uh, you know, it's 65 pound braid. It's never gonna let you down if you get hung up on something. I'm gonna try and just punch in and out of these lily pads and get down in there and see if I can't pull a fish out. In, in this scenario, like what I'm showing you, I, I'm basically testing the odds. I'm not saying I would enjoy fishing, you know, what I'm fishing right now at this pond. I'm just saying it will and won't work, but I'm just saying your, your ratio of actually getting into fish is gonna be a lot lower in my personal opinion because it just, you know, when you're fishing, you know, cover like this, you're not, if I was fishing logs or rocks or something, this is gonna be a killer bait. Why? Because 90% of the time, if you got a, you know, a pond that gets ran off from a creek or a river or something like that, you know, a lot of the food supply is going to be crayfish, it's going to be, you know, worms and stuff like that. When you're dealing with a pond like this, you're mainly dealing with bait fish. So spinners are gonna do a great job of um, imitating that, same with swim baits obviously, or you know, Cinco's weight, weightless stuff. But I'm just saying, say you were to fish off the bottom, I guarantee you, you're not gonna find as many fish, they're not gonna be down where you're looking for them. So just to test out that theory, I'm just popping a jig in and out of these weeds over here and seeing what my, my odds are. So if you're limited to what you have, there's actually fish. See? And it works, just really depends. It's, it's, it's 
Not a bad fish. Oh, flipped right off there. Right, I'm just gonna tap you in there. You good, bud? You good? He's good. So that's just my opinion. I mean, it's getting dark, it's getting late, and I kinda wanna just throw a little bit of everything. But so far, based on the amount of cast and the time that I'm taking, this one bait and the spinner bait's definitely been the go-to. All right, you guys. So that pretty much sums up the day. I know it wasn't like the craziest video. It probably wasn't the most, you know, professionally information mobile. But I'm no professional. I don't know everything. I'm learning just as much as everybody else. But I've been doing this for so long, and just I grew up pond hopping and everything like that. And you know, if you guys are just you only have an ugly stick, or you know, it's not necessary to bring several rods to a pond. If you can, that's awesome. Good for you. Uh, you know, I can too, of course, but there was a point in time where I only had like a Shakespeare ugly stick with 10 pound mono and a couple of baits to choose from. When I was a kid, the one thing I always went to was a spinner bait because I knew no matter what time of year it was, uh, whether it was spring, fall, summer, they would crush that spinner bait, whether it was a rooster tail and a bass spinner, a, you know, anything is a blade bait. It, it, it always worked. And then, you know, they had those summer days where the fish get a little bit lazier and you're in a more open ponds. Yeah, throw something like a Cinco or something like that for sure. But I can guarantee you guys, if you're out early in the morning or late at night, you want to throw, you know, you want to cover more water. You don't know what to do. Throw a spinner bait. Throw any kind of searching bait. Anything that swims for the most part. Throw a swim bait, spinner bait, buzz bait. That's really going to help you, you know, figure out where the fish are at and kind of what they're hitting on. Because 90% of the time, bass are going to hit bait fish. But um, there's a thousand ways you can fish. Everybody has their own, you know, style of fishing. Everybody has their own way. People are probably going to disagree with me. I'm not saying this is the only way to catch fish. But I think there's some helpful tips. So, hey, if you guys are some young kids or even adults that only have an ugly stick and don't have money or a variety of setups or tons of tackle but I can guarantee you you probably have one of these four baits in your tackle box get out there bring them to your local pond and just work for it you know the purpose of this video was you know I, I only get like an hour and a half of fishing time after work when I work full time during the week so this is like you know as you guys saw I caught plenty of fish to have fun by throwing that swim bait by throwing that spinner bait and, and you know what it was still fun it was a good time so but I hope you guys are enjoying the videos you know, like I said, I'm no professional, but I enjoy making videos. I enjoy helping the fin you know, the fishing community out. So, if, you know, help me help you guys. If if I'm wrong here, go ahead and leave a comment below. But otherwise, I hope you guys enjoy the content and uh, stay tuned for more. So, follow and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching.